Okay. Um, yeah, before we just get started with the lesson, um, just wanted to share uh, a couple of scriptures. There is, um, I think, what we have read from 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 6, right? 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Um, and if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay, so uh, first, uh, first Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And then we look at chapter 6 and um, verse 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, right? So um, if you look at 1 Corinthians 3, it's talking about collectively, right? To all the believers collectively saying that you believers, you are the temple of God, right? So he's referring to the Corinthian believers and he's saying you are the temple of God, which means the Holy Spirit dwells among you, dwells in you. So there's no question of defiling the temple, you know, either uh, by strife, or he's talking actually about division, right? Division and carnality and strife and quarreling and all that. So which is, which is bringing in division in the body, right? So saying that, um, yeah, saying that you cannot have that, right? And one could get six, he's talking personally, he's saying you or your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And you have been bought with a price. So both uh, are something that refers to the temple of God. And both, you know, sometimes it's very easy where we say, you know, uh, the Spirit of God dwells in me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? But we need to understand that collectively as believers also, that scripture is very clear that the Spirit of God dwells among us, which means that um, just as we would not do anything to defile ourselves personally, because it says that you cannot, um, you, you need to, we need to glorify God in our body and our spirit, which are actually His, which belong to Him. Therefore, the same way, similar way, we see that we cannot choose to defile the body of Christ. Okay, so um, how does one defile? You know, one Corinthians three talks about division. Okay, one Corinthians three talks about how uh, he says. Um, you know, you are uh, saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Uh, he's saying, you are carnal. There is envy, there is strife, there is division. So in this way, we are actually defiling the temple, which actually belongs to Christ. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6, he's saying, you were bought at a price. You belong to Christ. You know, spirit, soul, and body, you belong to him. Right? You are his possession, which means that you are no longer his, no longer yours, but his it says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, it says, you are not your own. Okay, so the sooner we come to that realization, we will be able to you know, possess ourselves um, as the temple of God. Or, or we will be able to live that truth as um, you know, individually, I am a temple of God, and collectively, we are the temple of God. Right? It's so important that both are, um, both are necessary for us to walk in greater level of maturity and um, so that God is glorified, right? So, yeah, why don't we just pray? And, uh, okay. Father God, we, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this reminder that, um, Lord, that you dwell among us, God. Lord, we thank you that collectively that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you move among us. Lord, that you inspire, that you do things, God, uh, in and through us, Father God. For with, from one, there is the word, um, and from the other, there is the confirmation. Lord, even as we gather together, each one of us, Lord, as your word says, bring a psalm, a tongue, an interpretation, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, Lord, and uh, Lord, from, from another, the confirmation of it, God, uh, the witnessing of it, O oh, Father God. Um, Father God, we pray that even as, um, Lord, we walk or daily, O oh God, in you, as led by you, may we walk with this understanding, Lord, that as believers, that we are the, 
your temple. And Lord, also individually, O oh God, that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you have bought us with your precious blood, that we belong to you, spirit, soul, and body. We are not our own, but we are yours, O oh Father God, for you have purchased us. And so we belong to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We are purchased possessions today, Father God. And uh, Satan has no part in it because we are completely, fully yours, Master. We belong to you. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, enable us to walk out or walk in this reality, Father God, always having this reassurance in our hearts, God. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so yesterday we looked at um, how, uh, how the Lord Jesus ministered. And really the intent of our study was, uh, was to... Um, Apply that in our own lives, right? So this is, these are the different ways he ministered. So he's our perfect role model. And, it, it, you know, it's not like he walked in a way that we cannot walk, right? He, it, it's not like it, these are too high a standards that he set that we cannot walk in. No, because he walked in sonship glory. He walked as anointed by the Holy Spirit. And he's given us the same privilege, Right. God has given us, the Lord has given us the same privilege. So um, so it's a joy to walk in that, right, in the, in the same manner, to minister in the same way, right? Um, okay, so let's look at chapter 8 today. Okay. So chapter 8, as New Testament believers, you know, as, as New Testament ministers, okay, first of all, um, you know, we need to understand that all of us are um, ministers of, uh, the gospel okay all of us are ministers god's ministers um in his kingdom okay so any doubts about that no okay there's no no doubts right so all of us are ministers and why do we say that we need to know that why do we say that we are ministers huh jesus commissioned okay but um, anything more than that Okay, so me because we can say, okay, I'm called to share the good news, teach about Jesus. Okay, but all of us are called to something more than that also. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Spiritual gifts again for all, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's the first responsibility. Okay. Online students, anything that you want to share? You can unmute and we can hear you here. Um, okay. Anything more? Something that's really solid that we can, where we know for sure. Jesus loves everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know John three sixteen, but um, no. Just go to Ephesians chapter four. Okay, Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. Okay, so whenever somebody asks a question, you know, how can you say that believers are called to minister, right? How can you say that people in the church are called to minister? Um, you know, aren't, aren't they just believers? No, this is what it is. Ephesians 4, verse 11 says, And he himself gave some to be Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Okay, talking about the fivefold ministry. Verse 12. For the equipping. So why did he why did he place these? For the equipping of the saints. Okay, so so that every believer can be equipped. For what? For the work of ministry. So every saint of God, every child of God, every disciple is to be equipped. For the work of ministry, and for that purpose, exists the fivefold ministry in the church, right? So, so to some extent, you know, 
we might call ourselves okay evangelists we call for the pastoral ministry we call for teaching whatever there is that element of equipping of the believer okay so teaching impartation uh, discovery of gifts all that we said you know uh, uh, and about the great commission inspiring motivating but the believer has to be equipped so that he or she can do the work of ministry which means that every believer has some ministry and every believer is a minister yeah yes one person is doesn't mean he was called to be the absolutely absolutely no so so the first 11 is talking about the fivefold ministry so he gave some to be this some to be that so not everybody you know not everybody who prophesying is called to be a prophet not everybody who's evangelizing is called to be an evangelist that we understand but the fivefold have to equip the saints for what for the work of ministry so the question is, is every believer a minister? The answer yeah. is yes. And this is the answer. You know, because it is very clearly said that every believer, every saint of God has to be equipped for the work of ministry. So it could be anything. It could be, uh, it could be uh, you know, in, uh, in, in, in evangelism. It could be in, uh, you know, the pastoral. It will be pastoral care. But they will Actually, be doing some other. They will be doing some other. It could be anything. It could be leadership. It could be compassion, like we see uh, Romans 12 and, and all that. It could be anything. But that equipping comes from these uh, fivefold uh, uh, for ministry. So we can say, you know, without uh, any question, without any doubt, that, uh, you know, let's say you are taking care of a church, you are, you know, you are. Uh, you know, ministering in a church, you know, part of your calling is to equip the believer so that they discover their call, they discover the gifts, get activated in the gifts and go do the work of ministry, whatever God has called them to. So it's not that, okay, you come, you attend, listen to the nice sermon and then go back. You come, attend, and go back. No, there has to be equipping, and they, which means that there has to be releasing as well. You know, uh, so it's not be, you know, I'm going to hold you. You only hear, no, it, it has to be, you know, whatever ever God calls, whatever God has called them to. So it's uh, it's something that we need to see, right? So, so the thing is that, that every believer is a minister. So therefore, you know, we, we are going to look at, uh, you know, personal preparation in order to minister God's word. Okay. So, so the Lord Jesus himself is the word which became flesh, the eternal word which became flesh. Um, you know, John 1 talks about that. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So uh, whatever he spoke, however we, he ministered, right? he ministered the word. Right? He went back to the scriptures like we saw yesterday and he said, it is written, it is written, and he declared. right? So whatever he did, uh, he did as the word of God. Whatever he spoke, you know, it is the word of God. Okay? So something that we understand is that the word, and and even in the Old Testament, we see that God puts the, His word uh, into a human being, or God asks a human being to declare His word. And just because a human being is declaring, a human agent is declaring, that does not minimize it in any way. Right? If you look at Jeremiah chapter one, we see that God puts His word in. Jeremiah's mouth, and he says, you know, now you go and you do this. Right? You do, you establish, you uproot, you all this you do. So what was it that was going to cost the establishing, cost the uprooting? It was the word of God. right? So we need to understand that just because the eternal or infinite word is spoken through a finite, limited human being, or human beings like, like you and I, does, that does not limit or that does not minimize the fact that it is the word of God. Okay, so uh, which means that um, we need to be, you know, we need to be careful uh, because as human beings, uh, we need to make sure that our flesh does not 
in any way cause any bias or any addition, anything to the the purity of God's word. Because we know, like you know, just like how we study in the prophetic and so on, we know that God, God's word is pure. The message is pure. The message is accurate. But because it comes through a human vessel, which also has you know emotions and feelings and and you know every every kind of maybe limitation biases whatever we need to make sure that that does not get passed on so it's part of the personal preparation as a minister to share the word of god right so so the first thing that we see that um, you know our feelings thoughts ideas um you know god god chooses human vessels he knows that we are not robots without any emotions or without any experiences or without any personality okay now the word which came through peter of course came with this personality you know peter was very impulsive peter was you know uh, what you what, what you see here you know right through when you read about him god's word also came through paul a very learned person who knew the scriptures so just because it comes through human vessel you know, it doesn't mean that we keep aside our experience, we keep aside our feelings, our emotions, etc. Our, you know, our enthusiasm, our zeal. It doesn't mean that we keep it aside and uh, and then deliver the word of God without any of that. Okay. So, we, of course, it comes mixed with our emotion. It comes mixed with our passion. Right? It comes mixed with all that. Um, but the thing is, the things of the flesh... Uh, maybe it's a bias. Maybe it's uh, something uh, you know that uh, if it's unchecked, that should not uh, you know corrupt or mix with the word of God. Which means our, our flesh needs to be worked on. Okay, so the word of God. Uh, you have a question. Uh, you have okay. So the flesh needs to be worked on. Okay, so which means that uh, you know, though God will use our thoughts, our you know our some people are intellectually. Are very capable or academically very sound. Some people are very simple in their uh, in their communication, and uh, you know. So God will use all that. Okay, um, but we we need to understand that our character, that our thoughts, imaginations, that our flesh, everything needs to be dealt with by the Word of God. Okay, first and foremost, that the word has to, you know, really go through us, change us, and uh, and we know that that happens. Um, okay, what's that? What is that? That happens in certain the laptop. Mine? No, it's uh, sorry. Anyway, so uh, it. Yeah, I think that's a uh, somebody's tab. Okay. Sorry about that. So it comes, um, you know, so we, we don't have to say that, okay, uh, just because somebody is intellectually, you know, or academically very sound, um, that they are more capable or the others are less capable. No. But the fact is that everything that we call as the flesh, which is, when we say the flesh, we are referring to the fleshly appetites, like of the body. We are also referring to the, unrenewed part of us okay which means our unrenewed thinking our unrenewed desires things that are not aligned or not changed uh, according to god's thoughts words god's ways right so that needs to be dealt with and we know it's a process right uh, but that needs to be dealt with okay um the next thing that we see is that um we are not merely called to just you know be a voice or just speak the word okay but we are we and the word need to be one the message and the messenger need to be one okay so which means that i cannot be detached from the word of god okay so we might say okay how is that possible you know how can i how can i just share the word uh, without being detached but we we saw that we saw examples like jonah we saw examples like right? um, even in um, you know church history we see that 
people were detached from the world. They did it as a duty or they did not have the same heart that God had. They did not have the same perspective or same motivation that for that message or they, they missed out on having the heart of God. Okay, so which means that the word needs to be part of our the message that we are preaching needs to be part of our spirit, uh, needs to be part of our our thoughts, our imaginations, our actions. Uh, we need to be doers of the word even before we, you know, share the word of God. And right? so uh, we need to really engage with the word of God at a deeper level, um, even before we share it. Okay, so that doesn't mean okay, I'm not uh, I'm not engaging with the word, so therefore I will wait. You know, I will wait. The thing is to say, okay, they engage with the word, right? So don't put it off. Don't say, okay, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it. Therefore, I will, I will not speak it. I will not share it. You know, the the thing is to, you know, take that step, right? Engage with the word. Let the word become flesh in us. Let the word deal with us. Let the word, you know, renew our thinking and everything. Um, you know, intentionally take that step instead of. You know, saying that okay, I'm going to wait, and uh, you know that 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 just re results in more delays. You know, it's that somebody said, you know, that that, that joke about that person saying, you know, I I I preach, but I also smoke. Okay, <laughs> so he said, I preach, and I also smoke. Therefore, I'm going to give up. Okay, so he said, what what are you going to give up? And I'm going to give up preaching. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, sometimes we, we say, okay, I'm not engaging with the word, therefore I will not preach. Okay. The thing is, you engage with the word. You know, you give up what is unnecessary. You know, you know that this is life. You know that this message is uh, is important, changes the destiny. So engage with the word. Let the word change you. Let the word, uh, you know, uh, you spend time in the, in the revelation. Let it change your thinking. Let it change your speaking, everything, expression. And go ahead and be a minister of the word. Okay, okay. Another important thing is that um, you know every time we want to share the word, we it's 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 good that we want to bring something new. Okay, uh, especially you know if it's a if it's a church kind of a ministry, right? If it's evangelist, it's a new, it's a you know it's most likely to be an itinerant. You know you're facing a new audience or a new uh, gathering bunch of people every time you minister okay like if it's a pastoral church kind of ministry you're facing the same crowd okay and sometimes there is a pressure to bring something something new all the time well well it's not a very um, very very um, what do you call uh, unrealistic expectation the holy spirit will give us new revelation Right, the Holy Spirit will give us uh, a new, new message, a new revelation. But we need not be under pressure to bring something completely new all the time. Right, it can be a deeper revelation of the same subject. Right, it can be a reiteration or a re-emphasis of the same truth. Okay, so be open to that. You know, sometimes we. Say okay, we just open the way praying, and then you feel like okay, we need to share about how God is a God of love. Saying, Oh God, this is like you know, this is like kindergarten, nursery school. You know, why should I? But the Lord, you know, just putting the same thing, just go do that, and I'll be with you. So, you then you go ahead, you prepare, and you share, and then you realize, Wow, this is what people needed, and this, you know, there's a great move of God, there's anointing. And then you realize, you know, this is what uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we did that rather than being under pressure to, you know, say something fancy, something new, something entertaining. Right. You went with what God felt. I mean, what, what you felt God was leading you to share. OK, so, yeah. OK, so. Um, yeah. Pastor, when we are talking about this, every time we don't have to keep uh, focus on one thing no, no no sorry sorry every time we don't like have to? like like taking the subjects if you take the love or if you take the salvation while uh, if we are talking like that can we take like this i mean if we are if you are going to preach a particular place like we've been invited to a 
college a medical okay. college okay or we've been in, invited to an engineering college or we've been invited to a village then we have to go with the leading of holy spirit mm -hmm. or we can prepare uh, the sermon uh, depending upon the group of people where we are going mm. so your question is okay you know is it me or is it the lord when it comes to the message you know how much of it is me how much of it should be okay if you pray and all most if my experience also if you pray and all we'll get one reference through that we'll build the message and all sometimes if if we if we call to a college so we have to speak in the context of them yeah. like we should not preach like some some uh, something that's in, not relevant uh, very, yeah. very theology theological mm -hmm. and all so true true yeah. so how we yeah, so I think uh, one great example is uh, the book of Acts. You know, the book of Acts where Paul is in Athens and um, I think which chapter is it? Um, yeah, he's he's on the way to Corinth and um, yeah, is Acts chapter 17, right? So he he's looking around, he's looking at all the people, I mean, all the things that, all the idols and places of worship, things that are, um, and then he looks at this altar and says that inscription to the unknown god and then and then he takes it takes from there and starts sharing right so the thing is um yeah so god has given us a mind god has given us you know taken us through uh, certain learnings and experience and it's for a purpose there's no nothing no harm nothing wrong in using it right so so uh, definitely like Proverbs says, the preparation of the heart belongs to man. The answer of the tongue comes from the Lord. So there is that part that we need to play in preparing, in researching, in really studying, right? And uh, and the Lord will highlight or give an emphasis. Uh, he will lead us, you know, uh, and give us those ideas, give us those illustrations, and uh, enable us to make it really relevant and uh, communicate it well. So that's the thing. So you don't have to feel guilty. Okay, you know, I'm I'm using my own strength in order to, you know, my own learning, my own. No, there's nothing wrong. Paul did that. We see that example. So, um, yeah. So the thing is to submit it to the lordship of the you know Holy Spirit. So like sometimes what happens is that we we prepare and say, okay, ah, this topic I've speak, I've spoken it so many times. I know point number one, two, three, and I'll I'll go and I'll do it. I'll share it. Right now, that is wrong. Because, yeah, we might have done it thousands of times, but then there won't be any freshness if it's not submitted to God and if we are not dependent on the Holy Spirit. Right? Because God might want to emphasize certain things. He knows the hearts of people. So, so that's the thing. So definitely our understanding will help us. But once it's um, submitted to... And if we are submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit, sensitive to, then it becomes even more impactful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, Pastor. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah so when, okay. So when we're talking about, um, uh, you know, um, submit, what you call, overcome our flesh, um, mm. and uh, being in the preparation of a, uh, preaching yeah so um what if somebody i mean uh any person who is not able to in that position of i mean they might be going through something yeah uh, which is uh, fleshly related yeah and um uh but still they have to uh stand and preach or something like that mm -hmm. but still they have to minister in church or still they have to uh fulfill their responsibilities Mm -hmm. um, for the role they have uh, given, yeah. Um, so how do how do they uh, deal with it? Um, I'm asking because I have I've come across a lot of people. I mean, I mean to flesh in the sense of a lot of um, uh, you know mm -hmm. struggles they're going through, and still uh, they are not in the right place to um, really. I know God is above everything, but mm -hmm. I'm only talking in the perspective of how do we, you know, go with it. Uh, so mm. how do we go about it? Uh, yeah. 
so let's say um, you know you're in a you're in a kind of a, let's say this person is in a role maybe a leadership role and you know it's something that cannot be avoided um, yeah. and still that person is carrying a lot of offense sort of hurt uh, mm. and um, you know and the person knows it he or she knows it and uh, you know they know it mm. and it could be it could be that it could be certain other things also you know it could be addictions yeah. so the thing is you know once we come to the knowledge that yes you know um when the person knows it um it, it of course we cannot um, we need to deal with it right we, it, it's no point in pretending and carrying on right mm. we need to deal with it so uh, and uh, definitely take help to bring it to whoever is uh, you know someone who's an accountability someone of accountability or a uh, counsel whatever you know just get it dealt with or take help mm-hmm. to deal with it right so that's the that's the right thing to do not rather than suffering you know on on their own and then um saying, so deal with it uh, second thing is maybe you know there are there is one occasion where you cannot you know where you, where you cannot help but you need to do it right you need to go um yes you're going depending on the grace of god you're going um uh, hopefully the person is uh, you know saying you know go- going and allowing the holy spirit to deal with them and you know cleanse their heart mm-hmm. uh, and receive strength for that day and uh, and you know and definitely you know going with the understanding that it is um, it is not their righteousness but the righteousness that we have received from christ um that is giving us that you know uh, taking us to the place of um, receiving from Christ so you know the throne of grace and you not know, to the, the lord has made available for us so so go and minister in that strength but do not continue in the same way right mm. uh, maybe there's one occasion there are a couple of occasions but you know don't let it become a pattern especially when you know that it's a struggle when you know that it is something that you it has to be dealt with and it is not dealt with the best thing is to speak share um get it sorted and then go maybe take some time off you know um mm. and and then do it yeah because it's not good it's not good for the person they are kind of they are imploding you know they are it's like exploding on the inside uh, mm. yeah so that's the thing that is what i would say any other thoughts you can um pastor what about um i mean uh it's i mean flesh of work of the flesh need not be only uh certain things but it can be like uh, people are struggling to lot of um, mental issues and uh, you know um and still they are in this leadership position and they have to mm. minister and it it creates i mean i've been observing uh, quite a few you know i've been when i was talking to people yeah. uh, but um, but it creates a lot of pressure on them that you know i need to be there even though i am going through something terrible i can't mm. take up you know i can't step take out time down or mm. take take time off because i don't know what effect it can be uh, or uh, mm. they are only not in a position of deal with themselves like you know handle themselves it's it's mm. very sad to see yeah. uh, you know but uh does it how does it make an effect on when they minister to people as mm. you said um, god works but we need to be uh, preparing ourselves our bodies our minds and right right uh, everything right. for him to work through us right yeah 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 so the thing is you know god god uses god will work because it's his word uh maybe the person is really struggling you know trying to uh, trying to be a good vessel a vessel of honor an instrument of righteousness in god's hand maybe the person is you know having all these struggles and they really uh, it's they're really finding it challenging okay so then you know we would we would say you know if it's a couple of occasions it's fine but they really need to um you know take that take a pause um step back and and deal with it so in terms of uh, you know what is the impact right you know the grace of god covers but i would say uh, i mean personal opinion that you, you you know if it's if it's not dealt with 
it will it will actually show up in a way when it's unexpected mm. and uh, it'll be an embarrassment you know uh, yeah so that's the thing right so mm. it could be at a time when you're ministering or it could be you know it it, it can it can result in a breakdown right mm. it can result in a breakdown so you we don't want that and god doesn't want that see god it's not like god saying uh, you need to go minister no matter what God cares about us first, first and foremost, right? He he doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the point that if you know uh, we are mentally a wreck, emotionally a wreck, and uh, and we are, but God cares about us, right? I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, in the uh, related to the same question, what what was probably asked? asked? Okay. So it's like uh, we we know we have to deal with like the people who are going with it. They have to deal like we can't continue both. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. even it's struggling or doing the things of our flesh and uh, doing the work of God. And right. uh, in case if if uh, like if it's like there's something own choice, it's okay. Like uh, they are doing willfully. But in case if they're really struggling, how we have a uh, she have asked uh, how you have spoken if they are really struggling trying to overcome and be a good vessel of god right. uh, they have to dealt with it but uh, the thing is like they already know the word of god so mm. how they can dealt or if in um, like if even we uh, have some anger issues sometimes we do get offense sometimes so yeah. we know we should not be but yeah. sometimes we go through uh, through the situation so right. how we can deal with it how can we deal with these things okay so the thing is um, yeah what we have seen you know, like oh, so your your first question is you know the person knows the word and still willfully there are certain things happening right yeah okay yeah right right mm -hmm. Yeah. See, one thing is personal victory. Um, you know, we can like just like you read David pulled himself up. He encouraged himself in the Lord, and he he went ahead with his assignment. So um, the Lord has also you know given us His resources, who we are in Him, uh, how we can renew our mind with God's word. You know, that's a very powerful thing. Okay, renew our mind because transformation comes from that place. And be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So, which means that when we don't see transformation, um, our mind still needs to be renewed. Okay. One simple thing I would say. Okay. What is your take on list? What is your take off list? Okay. The Bible talks about that, right? Put on, put on, and put off. Okay. So the Bible talks about that in, um, um, yeah. No, no, not an axe. It's um, see, what do you put on? What do you put off? Uh, I think it's in. Is it in Ephesians? Okay, very quickly. Let's just. Look. I think we have about five minutes. Um, Ephesians, right? Um, no, no, no. Put, yeah, put on the armor. But um, okay, so Ephesians four, um, okay, Ephesians four. It says, um, uh, and verse twenty onwards. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to its. Uh, deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness okay uh, and then I think um, yeah uh, even in chapter 5 okay so he talks about certain things that we need to put off and then put on. So, so what are some things that we need to 
put off so it's a very it's a very uh, it's a very simple thing but it's not i know it's not easy okay certain things are entrenched in us but um but by the work of the spirit we are to put to death okay so be intentional you know these there are certain things that i need to deal with okay i need to uh, every day make it an everyday thing just like how you want might want to work out or you know make it an everyday thing okay this is something that i want to put on in my life this is something that i want to put off okay this is this is uh, this is being a stumbling block this is a ceiling right i'm not able to go beyond that okay what is the solution you know i need to be renewed so that i can see transformation renewed in my mind so that i can see transformation in that area right and if by the spirit i i'm going to put to death the deeds of the body you know be single minded about it because galatians um, it's very very um, very very clear it says if i walk in the spirit if i'm led by the spirit if i walk in the spirit i will not right so that's the other thing one is renewing the mind putting on putting off and then learning to walk in the spirit it's an everyday thing you will find yourself walking in freedom i can guarantee you it's not my guarantee <laughs> based on the word of god because certain things which happen in my life i never thought i'd walk free i never thought i'd walk free i thought god if i if i make it to heaven if at all i make it to heaven with all these things with all these strongholds uh, it will be our secret that was my thing i said i cannot see freedom in these areas okay so i was willing to even resign from my company because you know i was not it was so frustrating and the frustrating thing for a believer is that knowing this is who you are in christ and not really walking according to it that's the mo most frustrating thing right but the lord gave freedom and it was not like a passive thing i had to you know take it appropriate it and walk in it so it's an everyday thing everyday thing saying god no this is why i'm coming back to it i'm taking it i'm walking in it this is mine this is what you've called me to you know renewal of the mind results in transformation i'm not seeing it god i want it i like going back to who i am in christ you know saying that you know i am the righteousness of god in christ when i've been you know like in you know, all that filth and everything so coming back and saying god it's not it's by your precious blood i'm coming back to that i am the righteousness of god in christ and uh, yeah so we there will there is freedom available and the thing is uh, like ravali was talking about you know we we don't have to do it alone uh, we do it in you know with with others right so that's the thing we normally we'd like to fix it ourselves uh maybe we are embarrassed maybe we don't want to others to know etc we don't have to let the whole world know but there can be one or two brothers who can walk with you alongside and we you know take their help right right i uh, hope that uh, let's see, yeah okay so uh, jack can jesus himself took aside his disciples one of them to be alone alone from the crowds and nurtured and began their ministry again yeah jesus loves us as we are um as we go to him as we are more than in what we do or how much we minister yeah so yeah time alone time with the lord is definitely healing strengthening and uh, refreshing and um, yeah a lot of things happen because of our lack of fellowship uh, our lack of intimacy with the lord you know that's for sure uh, a lot of things happen and also let's face it we we, we face attacks spiritual attack right we face there is a pushback from the enemy who does not want us to be all that god wants us to be who does not want us to walk in freedom there is always that so be aware of that right and uh, and use the resources the authority everything that god has given us the, the power right okay so th thank you jackin for sharing that uh shall we stop here and then we'll continue next class right